Hello, everyone. Welcome to this month's session, Designing a Communications Hub for Your Team. This is going to be SharePoint best or SharePoint Sites Best Practices. So thank you for joining us today. Uh, today's session is going to be presented by Nina, um, and I'll be kind of doing some uh, producing behind the scenes and, and piping in where applicable. Uh, but for the time being, I'd like to turn it over to Nina, who is our Microsoft 365 consultant for MyTech Partners. So take it away, Nina. Thanks, Stephanie. Welcome everybody today. Um, we'll quickly jump to our quick take. So what are we really trying to achieve today? We're going to be looking at why use a communication site, um, some of the common reasons for the lack of SharePoint adoption in organizations and why people tend to underutilize SharePoint um, and some key planning and design considerations. So our agenda, we will be looking at how to plan a communication site, think through some things like design and branding considerations, and then I'm going to demo how to create your own communication site. Stephanie, just over to you real quick. Yeah, awesome. So before we get into that, we always like to take one minute about my tech, um, just because sometimes people think, you know, they don't know what we actually do and think maybe we're a training company. So we just want to take one minute to talk about what and who my tech is. Uh, so we are business and technology consultants that serve uh, the small to medium sized businesses within the Denver Metro and the Twin Cities Metro area. Um, we really work with organizations to help you implement a proven IT strategy um, that's in alignment with your business goals. That doesn't mean it's the right strategy for every Everybody. We're all different, um, but we really have found some proven methodology that we feel can help you be more productive. Um, ultimately, we're trying to remove your IT challenges. As business owners and small to medium sized businesses, there's tons of challenges that we face every single day. Um, and so we're just trying to take IT off that plate so that you can be more adaptable to serve your clients better and the other business challenges that come up on a day to day basis. Ultimately, what we found is that our clients will achieve four times more value and productivity from their IT investments by adopting this methodology. So if this is something you're interested in, raise your hand or um, reach out to us afterwards. We'd love to have a conversation, but uh, let's dig into the real reason you're here and get into the content. Thanks, Tiffany. Mm -hmm. All right, so before we even start creating a communication site, I just want to look at why we would uh, choose a communication site. Um, so I don't know if any of you maybe caught our last session on choosing the right SharePoint structure where we looked at the difference between a team site and a communication site and why you would use one over the other. If you haven't seen that video yet, I would definitely recommend that you um, maybe go have a look at that one. It kind of goes into that in a bit more detail, but today we're going to focus really on a communication site and what that does for us. So some of the things that we might want to do with the communication side is, for example, sharing information and documents. This is probably the biggest use case that we see for a communication site. So if you're thinking of things like um, policies, newsletters, events, that type of thing that would be shared across different departments or perhaps throughout the entire organization. Other use cases would be to maybe showcase some content or tell a story. Um, to share news in a compelling and a very visual way, which uh, keeps people interested, or perhaps to launch a product or service. So a big question that we often get from clients is why is their SharePoint site so underutilized? Why is there such a lack of adoption? And there really are a number of different factors to take into consideration here. Um, I would say the number one thing that I've seen so far is site navigation or poor site navigation or complete lack of navigation. So it's not intuitive for people to be able to click on a link and know where to go. Maybe the links aren't consistent throughout the site or maybe there isn't any navigation built in at all. I would I would say this is definitely the number one issue that um, that we've come across. A bland design, so just like a public facing website, we want to keep things super interesting. We want to keep it visual. We want to draw our audience in and if it's really kind of boring, then we do tend to see, you know, people just not all that interested. This is a really big one, obsolete or abandoned sites. So in many organizations um, and ourselves included here, uh, maybe somebody took care of a particular site two or three years ago, but has since left the company and nobody's actually been continuing to update the content and keep it fresh. And so it's really just been abandoned. And if your audience keeps running into these types of sites, the chances are that just overall there will be a lack of adoption on your SharePoint sites. 
Um, this is another really big one as well. Um, either duplicate content or out of date content kind of ties in a bit with the um, obsolete sites, but it could be a current site, but perhaps the news was um, only updated six months ago or perhaps events are really old. And so even if some of the content's up to date and some isn't, that again causes issues because people think, why should I keep coming back to this site if the information that's contained there is old? Um, duplicate content is another big issue that we see, um, especially if, let's say, for example, there's uh, HR policies or compliance policies, and there's lots of different versions and they on different um, sites, and people are not sure which one they should go to. So that's something to think about, to rather have one source of truth, one site that's the source of truth, and rather to link to those documents rather than have duplicate copies of those documents living in different places. Um, the overarching issue here, I would say, is a lack of governance. And what I mean by that is like we constantly need to think of once we've created a site and once we've created content, how do we keep maintaining that? Who is responsible for that? Um, you know, who keeps that content up to date? Who cleans up when necessary? Um, and that I think is a piece that is oftentimes overlooked and we will definitely be digging into that a little bit more in our next session, although I will touch on it briefly today. All right, the most important first step with anything is to do your planning. And I think sometimes the problem with SharePoint is the stuff is quite user friendly to create. And so we do tend to just jump in and start doing things like, OK, let's just go in there. We create things and, you know, just kind of, you know, cowboy it. Unfortunately, um, I think this is where we run into trouble is if we haven't done the right planning and some of the issues or some of the components in the plan are as follows. First of all, the most important question to ask yourself is what is the main use case for this site? Why am I creating this site? Am I creating it for a specific department? Is it a project site? Am I trying to share documentation on there? Is it more for news and events? Am I trying to launch a product or service? And really, once we're able to ask, answer that question, then a lot of the other things kind of fall naturally into place. The second most or the second very big and important question is to ask yourself, who is your audience? Who are your viewers? What exactly are they looking for when they come to your SharePoint site? What are their priorities? And this is something that I've also you know, found a bit of a roadblock with for myself. Sometimes things that I think are priorities for people aren't really. And it's really important in times like this that I found to have a focus group or perhaps um, survey some of the people that would be your audience so that you can really dig into what it is exactly th uh, their priorities are and what's important to them. Another component here is the type of language that we use. So oftentimes within an organization, we have our own verbiage or acronyms or names for things that might make sense to us, but don't necessarily make sense to our audience, especially if we're thinking of um, new employees coming on and we're trying to do go through an onboarding process. So what makes sense to us doesn't always necessarily make sense to them. The third item here is around design and navigation, and that's such an important component. Um, asking yourself, is the navigation really intuitive? Um, as an audience or as a user coming onto your site, the following questions are important, like where am I right now? What can I do here? Can I really find what I need? And where do I go to from here? So very important questions to consider when designing your navigation. The other piece of this is, is the design appealing? As we mentioned earlier, is it really bland? Is it really interesting? Um, have we uh, put in there some really well-placed visuals? Um, so some of the things to consider with design and navigation. Now, oftentimes with clients, I find that we do these uh, first three steps and you know those seem really important, but there are two other components to this that, that are important as well. Um, the fourth thing here is governance and communication strategy. Um, and I know governance isn't always the most exciting sounding thing. Um, and here I just want to stop and say, um, it is actually really important and it doesn't have to be super complicated. Um, all it is is really documenting the sites that you have, 
who the contributors are to the sites, what their permissions are, and what the content update and frequency will look like. So these are, this is not super complicated to do, but so important if we're thinking of the longevity of our SharePoint site and just being able to maintain the content, as I mentioned earlier. Another piece to this is what is our communication strategy? So as we're building out the site and um, everything around it, how are we communicating this to others in the organization? Um, are we asking them to follow the site to bookmark it? Are we going to broadcast um, a launch or changes in our Microsoft Teams? So just some things to think about as how we actually communicate these changes to the rest of the organization. Lastly, it's really important, important to really consider um, ongoing improvement. Um, and a way to do that is to ask yourself the question, how will we actually measure success? How do we know that adoption is actually happening? And again, maybe not the most exciting or the sexiest piece of planning your site, but so important in ensuring its longevity. Um, some ways to do that is to consider maybe doing a survey with your um, uh, organization to say, are you finding what you need? What's missing? What's confusing? Uh, it could be take the form of maybe team check ins. So maybe having a meeting every quarter with uh, some of the departments or some of the department heads to ask these same questions. Um, another way to do this is in Microsoft 365 Admin Center, we can actually pull usage reports and there on a graph, we'll be able to see if there's an uptick in people actually using the SharePoint site, who's using it, what are they downloading? And that also is very helpful to give us insight as to whether people are actually adopting um, the SharePoint site. So I just wanted to run over a few site content tips and tricks, and this is as true for a SharePoint site as it would potentially be for a public facing website. So important that high priority content is first at the top of your page. Less is more is definitely a very important principle to try to reduce clutter on the home page as much as possible. Um, instead of trying to cram everything on one page, roll the link to additional information and to do that utilizing pages and links to those pages as often as possible. Um, white space and being able to break content into sections is also really helpful from a readability point of view. And so a couple of ways to do that is by using headlines, use, utilizing bullets, icons and lists. Um, and then the web parts in SharePoint are also quite helpful with this as well. Um, I would definitely recommend using high quality images and being really thoughtful and intentional about it. Uh, we know that 65% of people are visual learners, so not too many pictures, but not too few either. Just a way to create interest and draw people in. Right, so enough of the talking bit. I'm going to show you in a second how to actually go and create your own communication site. But before I do that, I have to practice what I preach and just quickly do an overview of what the site plan is going to be for today. So the use case for the site that we're creating today is going to be a demo clinic and it's going to be their landing or home page. So basically the front door to all the other uh, pages in our SharePoint site. Our audience is all staff with a specific focus on new employee onboarding. From a design and navigation perspective, we're going to be following our company's marketing brand guidelines, and then we'll be using a hub site to connect to all the other departments and other sites. Um, again, this is something that we're going to dig into a little bit more just because of time. Uh, we'll be looking at that in our next session. Uh, from a governance point of view, we're going to keep it really, really simple. We're going to have two owners for this particular site, one contributor from our marketing department, and we're just going to have a very simple two page document, but who the contributors are, what the permissions are and what the update frequency is. Our communication strategy for this particular site is that we're going to broadcast this uh, to our Microsoft Teams, to our all staff channel. And we're also going to really recommend that or encourage our audience to follow the site or book market. Um, how we will be measuring success is we will be checking out the usage stats in the 365 Admin Center. We will also be creating surveys that we want to send out to staff and we'll be doing regular quarterly team check ins to see whether the content is what they're looking for. 
So I'm just going to skip out of the PowerPoint for a second here. So this is kind of what we're looking to build, um, but we're going to start it from scratch. So we're going to log into office.com, which will bring me to this page. And then we're going to go over here to the waffle and we're going to pick SharePoint. All right, so you'll see you have the option here to create a site, so I'm going to just go and hit that over there. So for today we're going to be creating a communication site and we're going to call it. Demo clinic. So we're going to say this is the clinic. Demo clinic home page. Landing page. All right, finish that. <clears throat> All right, so SharePoint is really extremely helpful with um, providing templates. Um, then there's different kinds of templates to pick from, or you could go and create a blank one. For today's example, we're going to go check out some of the templates that are available. So there's there's quite a few to choose from here. Crisis management, departmental sites, a leadership site. There's a learning portal, a volunteer center. So I would really encourage that you try out some of these different templates and just kind of play around with them to see what's a good fit. So for today's demo, we're going to be using the department one. And we're just going to go there and say use templates. So it takes a little while to generate. While that's generating, Nina, is there? Can you talk through uh, the, just a couple of the template idea? Like, is this one? Have you found that the templates? You know, this one's departmental. Have you found in your research that that is a good departmental template? Like, like Microsoft did a good job at aligning kind of what typically is the bet the most important information for those different types of sites. I definitely think so. I've pretty much played with every template they have, and. I think that this one is best built, you know, for purpose built for departmental site. And I mean, you can still go in there and make all kinds of changes to it, but I think just generally the way that it's structured makes the most sense, I think, for a, for a department. As you can see, we have um, events over here, access to our document library, um, some shortcuts here to go to different pages. So yeah, I definitely think that this is one, and I this is probably the one I use the most, um, quite honestly. Awesome, thanks. Oh. Alrighty, so um, as you can see, we have this hero web part at the top. There's a couple of links um, and as I mentioned here, some events and it, it, quite a few web parts that make a lot of sense for department. But what we want to go do is we're going to go and customize it. So you see this gear icon here in the top right corner. And because we're focusing a lot on design and branding, I'm going to go into change the look. So we have a couple options here with change the look. We have theme, header, navigation and footer. So let's start with theme and here we can play around with different site colors. Um, now a question I often get here is can I customize this so that it's the exact like RGB values of my um, company branding? Now the short answer is yes you can but there's no out of the box way to do it currently so you actually have to run a PowerShell script um, and unfortunately we don't have time for that today so I'm just going to focus on what's available out of the box and if I go in here and I hit customize, I'm going to pick this uh, bluish um, kind of color over here for the main color and the green accent color. All right, so you can save and go back in there again, or you could just click the back arrow. I just like to save it just to make sure that it's kept my settings. So we're going to head over to the header section. So here's a couple of different options here. So I'm going to just run through them so you can see if I click on the layout here and I go to minimal versus compact, you'll see how this toolbar here is changing. So if you feel like you don't want to waste too much space or real estate on your page, you could definitely go for a, a compact or a minimal look. 
Um, the standard kind of puts the navigation here under the demo clinic name. Now, an option that I have here with the extended uh, version that I don't with these other options is that I'm actually able to in, um, upload a header pick. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. So if you have your marketing department or a marketing partner can custom make a um, header picture for you. So I'm just going to quickly run here to where I have some pictures available. So I'm going to just pick this picture over here. You'll notice that I can change the focal point so that I can uh, uh, position it the way I want. Uh, the problem now is that this demo clinic text is um, dark and you can't have dark text on a dark background. So I can go here to the theme options and you'll see the different options as I'm hitting them there. So I'm going to pick this blue um, kind of background with the white text just because that's um, stands out the most to me. Some of the other options here is um, do I want the site title visible over here? So I'm going to say yes, I do because I think that that's just helpful for people so they know where they are. Um, I'm going to go change the logo and the thumbnail. So this is going to be our clinic's logo. Here I would definitely um, recommend a logo on a transparent background. Otherwise it does the, the white background, which doesn't look that great. And I'm going to go change the site logo over here. Here you can change the logo alignment. So I can put it to the right, to the middle, to the left. I'm going to leave it on the left hand side. And I'm just going to hit save over there. Mm -hmm. All right, so from a navigation um, perspective, I can do just your normal drop down cascading menus, or you could select a mega menu, which looks like this and can have lots and lots of different sub items there grouped together. I personally prefer the mega menu. It just allows you a lot more options. And again, it's something that we'll be digging into more next time. So we're also able to do a footer. I'm just going to scroll down there so you can have a look. So I could either disable or enable it. I could just have a simple footer or an extended one, which is a little taller and has more options. I am going to include the logo over there. And I could say here demo clinic. Okay, and then I'm going to hit save. Right, so I have changed the look here. I've added my logos. Now I want to go and look at the page or edit the page itself. So I'm going to go here to the top right corner, hit the edit button. And this kind of takes me into the design view. As you can see, um, these are divided into different sections that I can edit. So for example, if I edit this section and I want to make it one column, two columns, three columns, um, so there's a lot of different options with background shading available. I'm going to make it two or am I going to make it one column? So those are some good options there. If I want to add a web part, um, you'll notice that as I'm hovering the cursor here, I'm getting that little plus sign and that allows me to add additional web parts. So let's say, for example, I want to add an image gallery down here. I'm just going to go. A couple pictures in there. And I'm going to make it a carousel so that I'm able to. Scroll through them. All right, so I don't like this um, default hero web part over here, so I'm definitely going to look at changing it. So if I click here on the pencil icon over here, um, I have the option here to change the title. So I am going to say here, welcome to demo clinic. And the background image, I'm going to change that to something of ours. And let's say we're going to choose this image. All right. 
Um, here, I'm just going to just keep it the default link, but if I wanted to change this so that it would link to a separate page, I could do it over here and you'll see that you'll, I'll just show you real quick. Um, you can link them to different pages within your site. I'm just going to cancel that for now. I'm just going to leave it as is just from a time perspective. All right, so this top picture. Uh, we're going to say here. Click here for more resources. So this was the section that I mentioned that we wanted to be specifically for new employees. So as they get to the landing page, there's immediately a link for them that will take them where they need to go. And we're going to change that picture. And then we'll do one more here. So we would like to highlight that we have new training available to staff. So we have diabetes nutrition training now available. And we're going to change that background image. So I can upload images as you've noticed over here, or what's really nice is that I have a ton of stock images to choose from here as well. So if I type in here, healthy food, and let's see, we want to also pick a picture that um, goes with our color scheme. So I'm going to go with the bowl of avo there. Okay. All right. At any time when I want to make sure that these changes are happening, I can go and republish it. It's just busy publishing. All right. One thing I just want to um, call out here is if I look at page details over here, um, I can check out the version history. So very much the same as um, uh, you know, going back into to a different version on a document, I can do the same thing here. Um, so if I made a mistake or maybe it's just not quite the look that I want, I can come back to version history and um, just kind of backtrack a little bit um, to the point that I, I wanted to go. Okay, so here um, we want to start adding in some events. So I'm going to click here to add an event. And we're going to say that we have a medical conference coming up. And this is going to be on the 21st. And here again, I don't like that picture very much. So let me see if I have anything in here. We'll let's just use a stock image, I think. Uh, I always do that. And And we hit save. Great. So if I go back to home, see, you'll see that these, um, as you start adding events, that will populate this area over here. Um, I also want to go and add some news. So I have two options here. I could either do a link to an existing article that's out there, or I can go and create my own news post. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a post here and it's called Travel Safely This Summer. All right, I have decided I don't actually need this section, so I'm going to go and hit the delete button there. Um, I'm going to Put some demo text in here. Uh, and again, you'll see the use of headings really makes the text stand out a little bit more. So definitely good to utilize um, those. So let's add that in here. OK, um, and then we don't particularly like this picture, so I'm going to go um, hit the change image here. And. Let's see, summer. 
think I'll add a beach picture in there. Okay, post the news. So as you can see, pretty um, easy out of the box. Just go in there, do what you need to do. Um, so we're busy adding events here. We're busy adding news here. Um, I just want to show you one other thing in here. Oh. I go and hit the edit button here again. Um, you can obviously go and move these around. So I can go grab it, put it over here, uh, move this over here. So a lot of drag and drop functionality. I don't think that looks so great though, but just to demonstrate. Um, and these links can obviously edit be edited as well. So if you want to go and add links, if you want to edit the links, you can uh, do that as well. So I'm just going to republish real quick. And Nina, just to clarify on the links too, is mm. that can you link externally from SharePoint too? Like if you were linking to your company website or things like that, it's not yeah. linked to other SharePoint content. No, correct? absolutely. Yeah, whatever URL it is that you post in there. Um, and one other thing just to point out now that you mentioned that um, to just to be careful that whatever links you post here, that the people that are selecting those links or clicking on those links um, have permission to view that page or that content. Otherwise, they'll be getting the access denied um, uh, message. And so that's another thing that we'll be looking into next session is going to be audience targeting, and that's how to make sure that the navigation is targeted to a specific audience and that they're not seeing links in the top navigation or anywhere else that they shouldn't be clicking on. So just one kind of side note there. Yeah, and I remember in a conversation we had the other day, I saw it in your description there too. You had mentioned that I thought a good tip about um, when you're talking about nav or um, headers and you were saying don't underline headers because oh yeah look so if you I don't know if you want to, to share see that, here that was a good tip yeah and this is actually the default text as is actually has some um, underlines here and you know it looks like it's a link but it's not so yeah just just one thing to take note of thanks for pointing that out so that's a great example of what not to do all right, so so we could go in as I show now, but just in the interest of time, I'm, I'm not going to do too much here, but um, go into the edit and you know change the text here with our own clinic text. Uh, obviously, we don't want it to be Contoso. It's going to be our clinic. Um, so all of that would be done by hitting this edit button here. And just because we are kind of running out of time a little bit, one last thing I just wanted to briefly touch on over here. Um, if you uh, click on this gear icon in the top right corner is looking at the site permissions. So who do I want to have um, access to the site? So um, as we looked at in our previous video, and I'm just going to go over that really quickly, we have three types of permissions here. Site owners who have full control over everything in the site, every web part, all the content, they're able to add stuff, delete stuff, the whole thing. So um, I have full control here, but it is good practice to have more than one site owner, not too many, maybe just two or three, just in case maybe I'm out of town and somebody else needs to do something there. So I'm going to say, share site. I am going to make Nathan Austin an owner by giving him full control and it will send him an email. So I am going to add him. All right. So for limited control, I have nobody right now. And limited control is basically um, being able to edit or view site content. If you're not sure, you can always hit uh, hover over the little eye on the right hand side here. So I am looking for somebody to help me keep the content up to date. So I'm going to share this with Stephanie and she's my um, contributor from the marketing department that we spoke of earlier and I'm going to give her edit access. So let's add her. So we have two site owners. We have a site um, a member here who can do edits. Um, again, if you want to add more than one person, just in case that person's on PTO or out of town, um, that would be a good idea as well. So site visitors have no control at all. In other words, they have read only access only. So I'm going to share this site with all company members and they're going to have read only access. 
All right, so we've set it up so that everybody in the organization can read. Um, Stephanie is going to be doing edits for me and Nathan and I have full control over everything on the site. All right. Alright, so I'm going to leave the demo there today just uh, from a timing perspective. Um, let me quickly just rush back to, sh to my PowerPoint real quick. So just a couple of um, things that are takeaways from today. Um, really take the time to plan. It really pays off in the end. Um, I would also recommend involving key players from different teams to get feedback um, and to help keep everything fresh and um, that makes sense for people. Um, this ties in with uh, designing a long term governance plan. And again, this doesn't have to be complicated. I know when I say governance plan, people are like, oh, this is just way too much stuff. It can be a one or two page document um, that explains just those basic things like who's going to be contributing, how many times a week or a month are we going to be doing um, updates to the site, what type of updates are we going to be doing, and just some guidelines around the branding, the colors, etc. Um, and lastly, I would say measure your success and don't be afraid to change when and where necessary. OK, so Stephanie, I'm going to head back to you there in awesome. case there's any questions. Yeah, um, so yeah, and I don't know if you have the, the final slide there too. So at this point, we'll let anybody who needs to drop off. Sorry that we did go a little long. Um, we'll be opening it up for questions. I know there is one in there right now here in a moment, but uh, please subscribe and follow us on YouTube. We post all of this content online afterwards, um, so we'll be sending you a link to the recording as well. Um, check out the events Nina mentioned, like for instance, next month we're going into navigation, so be sure to register for that. That's live for you to go do right now, um, as well as power user group. So we do these sessions every other month, which dig in a little bit more to the te uh, technical and the back end of a lot of these. And I believe in September it's not posted quite yet, but in uh, a couple months we're going to be doing one that's specific specifically on governance and permissioning um, in SharePoint sites. So keep an eye out for that and just continue to join us for future events. So if you need to drop off because uh, we've been a little long, thank you very much for attending today. Um, otherwise, we will open it up for questions. Uh, so feel free to post those in the Q&A panel. And we do have one here that Nina, I'm going to ask you and see if you can help out here. So the person's saying that they created a test communication site. And when I added news, it somehow pushed those articles to people, people's email notifications in other areas. How do those web parts work? Hmm, that's an interesting. I haven't seen that happen before. I'm wondering. Hmm. And are they wanting to not have it go to people's email? That people should just come here to the site? I'm not sure in the question. I know and you and I talked about this a little bit is that we didn't believe that was a default. That was something that you'd actually have to probably set up through Power Automate if you wanted that to happen, but some, I don't maybe there's some back end. Yeah, there might be. I'd have to dig into that. I haven't, um, you know, really played with those kinds of settings, but um, yeah, I just want to see if there's an option here just in this the properties. Hmm. Yeah, I was going to say if you want to post interesting their info, oh, there's another one that came through. Yeah, uh, if I could just get a bit more background, that would be helpful. Just not knowing at the moment exactly what that looks like and what those settings are. It's a bit hard to comment on it, but um, yeah, I'll I'll dig into it a bit more. And if we follow up with us in, a, in another session, I can hopefully give an answer there. Yeah, perfect. OK, I just posted. Uh, they said no, it shouldn't get pushed to anyone, so they're clarifying they don't want okay. it pushed to anybody. All right. So. Well, let me dig into that to see why that's happening, and um, yeah, awesome. hopefully we can post something about that. Yeah, I posted. Um, I replied to that with an email address. So if you want to send me some info on your contact information, perfect information, we can reach out then. Mm -hmm. Awesome. We did have another question come in. It says, when you create a hub, does it stay hidden until you share it, or is anyone capable of viewing it as you create it? Uh, so meaning the communication side, I assume. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, unless your people have a link to it or you've set it up in your navigation. So let me show you just here. Let me just get out of this one. 
So this is our MyTech demo environment. Um, generally, when you go to SharePoint, um, you only see the the sites that you've actually um, actually visited, which is kind of annoying. And this is why we're going to be looking at hub site navigation in our next session. So unless they've been there, they probably won't be able to see it. Um, so I generally build it and then only once I'm ready to launch it, do I go and add it here to my navigation up here because generally people don't don't even know that it's there. So yeah, I kind of build it in the background and then link it up to navigation when I'm ready to launch. Awesome, hopefully that answers the question there. So um, other than that, at this time, it looks like we don't have any further questions. So uh, thanks again, everybody for joining and hopefully this was helpful. Again, reach out if you have any questions or want help on this in the future and we hope to see you on future sessions. So thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you.